Coach, so I want to ask you about Mish Powell at the interception, you know, late in the, in the game for you. Just how big has he been for that defense, you know, at that safety spot for you this season? Yeah, I think he's played really well. He's graded out well each week. Uh, tackles well. Uh, seems to be always in the right spot. Kind of calms the storm, you know, I've said it before. Uh, came up big with an interception at a crucial time. So, uh, continue playing well. I think him and Harris are really playing well together. Deani is another one that was really flashing the other night. He seemed to have a, a really good game. I mean, it was, you know. He did. Deani, uh, you know, he came out, of, came out of fall camp with a bit of a hamstring, and he's back healthy again. He was flying around out there. And uh, he'll continue to get better. And, uh, you know, this game means a lot to him. You can tell by the way he plays. For you in that second half, kind of shut him out. What was the biggest adjustment or anything that kind of changes the defense that allowed you to be successful? Really, we didn't do too much things different, really. Um, you know, in the first half, uh, they were doing some things where they was rubbing us and picking us. And so we started switching some things off with the motion coming across. Uh, it's like playing against, playing against basketball teams, right? So, um, you know, if they got guys that shoot from three-point land, you can't play zone. You got to go play man because you got to take it away. With that, you're going to get screens. So are you going to switch and go over the top of the screen or are you going to switch the screens off? So it was a little bit of that, a little bit of chess match. They kind of figured out what we were doing and they countered and then we had to counter back. And I think I, the biggest point was our D-line started to wear on their offensive linemen and we started getting back to the quarterback and I think that affected them. So uh, we had a good game plan. Uh, they know what to go to when they see it. but. You know, a long time ago, a coach told me, if you took a formation, you draw it right down the middle. You got to have enough guys on this side to defend and enough guys on this side to defend. As soon as you don't have enough, they're going to get you in a run game. So it's the same thing the other night when they spread us out real wide. But we had two guys covering. We had a post safety and everybody else was in the box because you just got to stop the run first. We knew they wanted to run the football. That's kind of where they start. So we just kind of had a bend but don't break mentality on the back end with some passing game. And we gave up 15 points, you know. I wish we could have played a couple routes a little bit different, but the guys got a little tired, but I, I thought we put up a good effort. Yeah, I love that. And just broadly, not about last Saturday's throw, is the whole notion of halftime adjustment, can it kind of be overstated sometimes? I mean, you're not waiting for halftime to make adjustments. You're thinking about the fly down in this game. Is it, is it more of a talking point than reality, or are there really more often than not true adjustments that this is what I found. I found out that through my years, this is just my experience, not anybody else's, but you look at film and you watch it and you have a plan of how you're going to stop it. And when you come out to play against them, they're not going to do that. They're going to have something else. So you have to be able to fix the problems before halftime. If you fix the problems before halftime, they'll probably go back to the things you saw on film. If you haven't stopped the problems, then your job as a coordinator is to fix the problems that have because they're coming back to it. Once you fix the problem, they'll go back to what you've seen on film. And to me, that's where you make your money as a coordinator. You don't make it on the weekends. You have to be able to game plan, but you also have to be able to adjust in game and know exactly what to go to by what they're doing. And a lot of times that comes from experience of just seeing it. And to tell you the truth, my high school experience has probably helped me more than any of my college experience because you start off Defending option football, wing T, empty. You see everything in high school. Everybody copycats, and you'll see one offense one week, and you never see an offense again. So that's kind of where you cut your teeth, you know, as a coach. I found that's that's my track anyway. Lance Woods, so Ruben Bain, he has not been able to play the last three weeks, but you see him pregame working close on the younger guys. Just his work as the kids want to, the healthy guys are beginning when he doesn't play. Yeah, what does that mean to you? Ruben's getting close, and Ruben's a good leader. He's very mature. I said it before, and uh, he wants to get back, and he's seeing a lot of guys play, and when he gets back healthy, he'll be back in the mix like he's supposed to be, and I uh, can't wait to get him back. You know, I think he'll come back at the right time when that is. I don't know, but he's getting closer and closer for sure. Vince, what have you seen from the Virginia Tech offense? Uh, they're dangerous. The quarterback's a really good athlete. He can throw it deep. Uh, he can also run. Uh, the running back, number 33, is really fast. He breaks tackles. He's a short guy, but he's really strong. And they have a wide receiver, 83, who can really run. So tight end, they involve him in a lot of the passing games. So they have four guys. They have more than that. But that's like the four focal points of their offense, I feel. And they do a lot of quarterback run stuff. So 
will be a little bit different this week because they present different problems. But, uh, you know, we're trying to work through that right now. Does it help, like, obviously, USS quarterback's a dual threat guy, BG's quarterback's a dual threat guy. Does it help kind of stick with preparing for? Nah, it's, it's totally different. They're not a spread uh, type offense like the Baylors of old. You know, they're more um, power read, a lot of motions involved. Uh, play action off of it. It's, it's a different formation. It's a little bit tighter sets, not as open. So it's it's a little bit different strategy on offense. So we have to be a little different on defense. Your communication in the secondary appears to be significantly better this year than in the past. Is that an accurate yes, sir. observation? Yes, system. I think they're familiar with the system. Even though Mish came in and had to learn the system, it was like something else he had learned. Of course, Harris was his second year in, Markeith, Porter, you know, corners don't have as much to learn as the safeties, but then you have the backers, you know, this the brain trust as well. So we have more guys familiar with the defense than last year, and that plays into it. The first uh, year is always tough because not only what you put in and install each week, there might be a wrinkle, and sometimes that's tough. So right now, I just think we know the defense a little bit better. So we're able to look at the offenses and really kind of diagnose what they're doing. Don't have to think about what we're doing as much. Has it been as clean mentally as it's looked? I mean, it, <laughs> sometimes it's fooling, man. Sometimes I think, God, that was a great play. A guy he messed up, and that wasn't even it. It's kind of like the Harris play, you know, against Florida. Everybody thought he was wrong, but he was covering the man tight end. You know, our backer didn't come off the edge, so he looked like he made a mistake, but he didn't. So, you know, you look at, at every year, at the end of the year, you look at cutups. And you look at your calls that you made, and you try to find calls that look right, and there's always something wrong with a call. There's always they didn't, but that's defensive football. If you play hard sometimes, you're supposed to be in a gap, but the ball didn't go there, you get out of your gap and you run. I always say the ball's the issue, you know, and it's it's like that forever on defense. You, your guards will take you to a play, but you can't go until the running back goes there. So they just indicate which way he should go. So. You've talked about how you set a goal every game of getting a third quarter shutout. I think you've done that now in three or four games. Why, yeah. why do you feel like this group has been so good at, at executing that? I think communication. I think we probably solved problems a little bit quicker on defense, and that's not just because of experience with our players or me. Our coaches also know what we're doing. And there's not a lot of times we have to meet together. You know, Jason knows exactly what we're going to do with the defensive front once we put the game plan in. D. Nick knows exactly what we're going to do with the linebacker position. And then he says, Lance, what if they do this? Can we tweak it like this? I said, yeah. Chevis has been with me before, so we know the defense better as a staff, which helps us on game day be able to change at an instant like that. JT said, Lance, how about this? I say, go with it. Let it play. So that's just kind of how we communicate now because we know about, they know what I want and what my vision is and they work from within that. And plus their experience from being other places has also helped me as well, putting things into my system or our system. Man, just, um, I think we just now, and you guys have not spoken about this season, but um, I think you guys improved by 12, 13% uh, on third down defense and guys off, getting teams off the fields. What do you see anything different from what you guys did last year to just, you know, a better defense, better communication that is working? What have you seen uh, specifically on, on third down? Defense? I think we're able to do a little bit more than we did last year, uh, just from the personnel we have. Last week was probably our hardest. We got in a lot of third mediums because of their tempo. I thought they had a really good third plan, uh, third down plan against us. We were a little bit simpler on third and medium. But the key is to get to third and long. And third and long, a little bit better. We also, I mean, we gave up a big uh, screen. Uh, we were supposed to be in a certain coverage and we blew it. And, uh, which got them down there, but we ended up stopping that series. But I just think that, you know, we're able to do a little bit more and we're able to communicate a little bit better this year. So um, we'll see down the stretch. We not we haven't even got the conference play yet, you know. Uh, so it's our first one and uh, we need to play well. You mentioned kind of a bend but don't break uh, approach with the passing game a little bit against USF. Was, that, was some of that like uh, the, the slot receiver Having his success playing a little off him. Yeah, you know, when the guy moves, you can't press him. You know, that's slot receivers, that's where they put those guys. Sometimes you'll look at film and you say, oh, he can't get off a press. Uh, but a lot, sometimes if they feel like a guy can't get off a press, they'll back him off and let him be the motion guy where he won't get pressed. So he has more access to get releases. Uh, guy was really good, you know. We able to we was able to tap him. I felt like it is gonna get some plays, uh, but if we got him down and made him restart again, 
eventually they would run out. And as you saw, once they got closer to the goal, it's kind of like they ran out of space. They didn't have nowhere to go no more. And it kept, you know, kind of drowning out on their series and kicking field goals. Guy hit everything field goal, I think, seemed like. But uh, yeah, uh, that was kind of our philosophy. Stop the run, uh, keep the ball in front of us and just tackle. And we knew it was gonna go fast, but you cannot simulate that speed and you can't simulate how tired you're gonna be and when you're gonna be able to get off the field because you only get off the field throwing a dead ball or when they switch personnel. So sometimes the D-line was looking aside, it wasn't for the calls, it was coach gonna get me. <laughs> so it was fast, but uh, I thought we did a good job. I really did. Um, so playing those type of offenses, just like option, you can't simulate it until you get out there and get in the rhythm and start playing against them. Seeing a guy like Miles and Moody on come up with his first interception just because, you know, walk yeah. on his awesome stories. How awesome is that for you? It's awesome, you know. I'm a former walk on. Uh, probably a lot of people know that. I walked on at McNeese in my second year. I was a starter. So I ended up starting four years and I was a walk on. So when a walk on comes in a game and makes a play, I know exactly how it feels, you know. So everybody was excited. You could tell how everybody was excited because that guy puts in a lot of work and he's made plays at practice. So uh, we was all excited for him. We really was. I want to go back to something you said in the previous question. Sometimes because the game is fast, sometimes it's not going for a call, it's not going for something out of here. How often are you selectively missing somebody when they say that, that give you a certain amount to know you got you got one more in you? Do you? You know, there's there's certain if a, if you have time to get a guy off, you get him off. But what what they were doing, you you can't get a guy off. You know, you can't get him off until it's a dead ball or. They throw the ball out of bounds on their sideline where they're supposed to stand over it. Um, I mean, that was the only time you can get them off. So you got to kind of be stuck in those series. I think that's kind of within a program, everybody used to have a big, big, big nose tackle. And now it's kind of because of the, the game, the way it's played, you don't need that big guy. Or there's no reason for him because it's hard to get him off the field against a team like that. So there's really no place for him. Now you need him against the 12 personnel teams and things like that. So. Uh, yeah, it's hard to get guys on and off some time when they go on that fast. When it's uh, on this approach this week to Pat Hard Rock Stadium, you, you guys played so far in two, you know, pretty wild yard environments until they were in. Uh, but how much do, uh, you know, defenses feed off of that, that energy from the whole crowd when they're being as loud as possible and the opposing offense on the field? I think it's always good when you're home. Uh, of course, you want to play in front of big crowds, but uh, you just play different at home. I think you play with more emotion on defense. Uh, you tend to play with a little bit more pep in your step. You tend to run harder to the football. Uh, we usually hear them on third downs is when, you know, the crowd gets into it. Uh, so, yeah, it's always good. It's harder for us to communicate sometimes on third down to make checks. But uh, it's always good to play home, and it's good to play in front of a packed house. And uh, But I'm sure the more we win, they'll keep coming. We just got to do our part as coaches and players and just keep winning. Anything else for Coach Gator?